I love Christmas. It's my favorite time of the year to cook. It's the only time I get to cook food for my family when we're all together. And now I'm here with Vanessa from Metricon Homes. What do you, what do you cook at Christmas, Vanessa? Uh, Michael, I come from a very European family. Um, we come from the coastline of Croatia, so oh, it's all about beautiful. seafood yeah. in my household. Love that. Yeah. Love that. Well, I'm going to glaze a ham. Excellent. Have you ever glazed a ham before? I actually haven't. Brilliant. So this is the easiest glazing of ham ever. Fantastic. There's, there's a million ways to glaze a ham, but I think this is the best. Yep. Now, I'm going to get stuck into this, and you're going to tell us where we are yep. and why we're here. So we're located in um, South Australia in the Adelaide Hills Beautiful. in Blackwood Park yeah. and we're currently in one of our Metricon display homes which is called the Hampshire 45. I feel very spoiled to be able to cook in this massive kitchen, it's yeah. absolutely awesome. Yeah, this is a big family home <laughs> yeah. and the great thing about this home is that there's three separate living areas so it's perfect for entertaining yeah. and the great thing is very much for the host. I mean, gone are the days where that poor host is stuck in the kitchen, hidden away and they're literally missing their own party. Exactly right. Where these days the way in which we design Design is the kitchen is very much the heart of the home. Yeah. Um, we design very open plan and very much cohesive spaces that very much encourage interaction between the kitchen, the living, the dining, and most importantly, the outdoor space as well. So that. the host is very much oh, amongst good. it all and amongst yeah. the party, yeah. Well, that's why this ham is such a perfect dish. I've just pulled the skin off our ham. Now that just provides a little coating. And you can see here, we've got a beautiful ham, a whole leg of ham. Uh, this has been lightly smoked mm -hmm. um, and it's got a big thick layer of fat now. Don't, don't freak out, fat is flavour. <laughs> and we want a nice fatty ham when we're glazing a ham because we're actually going to use the fat to melt down and render into the ham and flavour it up and also help our glaze stick to it. So Beautiful. the next thing I need to do is just get a little paring knife and run it along our ham. And I'm just sort of feeling for where the fat meets the flesh. I don't want to go into the flesh. And this is that sort of, you know, when you see, a, I'm sure you've seen a glazed ham, you yeah. get that nice cross hatch. Yeah. This is all we're doing here is just to do that. And that helps start the, the rendering process and the fat melting. Yeah. So I get back to Adelaide every Christmas and I like to have a couple of wines the night before just to, you know, settle into the festive spirit. Beautiful. The best thing you can do is you can actually glaze this, score and cover it in your marmalade ahead of time. Yeah. Do it the day before. So if you do roll in a little bit later than you, uh, you expected, and you might be a little bit tired, I'll call it tired, that's what I tell mum, <laughs> on, uh, on Christmas morning, you can literally have this in the fridge, all you have to do is put it straight in the oven, no Perfect. prep in the morning on Christmas day, that's which fantastic. I love because I can have this all done, I can spend the time catching up with my cousins, yeah. catching up with you know maybe a couple of Panadols. <laughs> um, now, I've seen a billion different glazes for ham. Mm -hmm. Coca-Cola, pineapple juice, mango, yeah. you know, it's pineapple and cherries, yeah. cloves. Everyone's got the different way of doing it. I've got the simplest way in the world and I actually think it ends up being the most delicious. It's, I mean, it's almost cheating, I feel bad. It's not actually, <laughs> it's probably not even cooking. It's a jar of marmalade yeah. and a pun of rosemary. So this is the bit you do the night before. You get your marmalade and again, there's no pretty way to do this. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you, you know, You've got a, a tea town nearby. You just pour the marmalade over the top oh, of wow. your ham and let it spread and just looks messy. It's kind of a bit fun too, actually. You can probably get the kids to help you. I was going to say, yeah. it'd be a perfect thing to get the kids involved the kids. in. Yeah. Exactly. So just spread it all over. Now, some will roll, like, spread down to the, into the bottom of the tray, and that's fine because yeah. we'll lose a little bit anyway. But that is, that's how ham glazed. And then all we do with your rosemary, we just literally sprinkle it over the top anywhere. Spill a little bit, it's fine. Mm -hmm. And just cover it. So this is going to cook for an like hour and a half to two hours. And, 180 degree oven, and what's going to happen is the rosemary is going to crisp up. Beautiful. So you get nice crunchy bits of rosemary, you get yeah. little bits of that fat that renders out, and then you get your sort of marmalade. And that's as easy as it is, simply glazed ham. Yep. Now Vanessa, can you grab the oven yeah, for me? Yeah, of course. We're going to go in there for about two hours at 180 degrees, so it's nice and caramelised and sticky. So Vanessa, our ham is almost ready. Yep. So we're gonna make a really quick salad that goes perfectly with it and plays off with some of the flavors that we've used to marinate our ham. Fennel, I've just sliced it really thin and just a little squeeze of lemon juice on it so it doesn't oxidize and go brown. Raw red onion, nice and crunchy, nice and fresh. We had orange in our marmalade, so orange is our main flavor for our pork. We're gonna go just some slices of fresh orange. And then this is baby French kale. It's a bit like spinach. I'm yep. like, I'll give you a try. So you know how kale can be tough and, and very hard, it gets yeah. stuck in your teeth. This is really soft, it's really very sweet. It reminds Ooh. me of baby spinach, it's got a bit more of that sort of brassica -y, stronger flavour. This is out new at Coles, only, only recently, so it's perfect for Christmas. Now we're gonna make a really quick dressing. So, yeah. about a tablespoon of whole grain mustard. Now when I make dressings, the usual, you know, the, the classic technique is four parts oil to one part vinegar. I'm a okay. bit more two to three parts oil to yeah. one part vinegar. So we're gonna go 
And I'm gonna measure it by eye. So do you wanna open that? Yeah, sure. Eye? And we're just gonna go, if you do half as much or you know, a third as much vinegar as I've done with oil, and then we have a good pinch of salt. And this is for me just a classic mustard dressing, really simple. But it goes well, again, pork, mustard, great combination. Yep. Mustard and orange go really well together. So it's probably a pretty classic French combination, but it's gonna work really well with all the ingredients in here. Beautiful. And so I've got to say, I love the kitchen here because I can see my friends and my family in the dining room. Yeah. My uncle who's having a nap on the couch because he's had one too many eggnogs. And the location of the kitchen in relation to the living space and the dining yeah. space is so important to good design. Absolutely. Yeah. So as you can see here, the spaces just beautifully flow into one Perfect. another. Now, I'm sort of of age that mum tells me I should be buying a house. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure I'm ready to yet. How many, how many bedrooms has this place got? Would it have enough to fit me and my aspirations to one day have a family? De definitely and plenty more room on top of that. Right. So there are five bedrooms. Oh, there's a, yeah, there's a yeah. beautiful opulent master upstairs right. and a guest bedroom downstairs too. Now I've just chucked our dressing in here and I'm yep. going to really gently now work it through. You could use some tongs or a spoon here but I like to mix my dressings by hand. Yep. We don't want to overload it with dressing so I think they're pretty good there. You can see nice and shiny but when I pull the salad away there's not any remaining at the bottom mm -hmm. of the bowl. Yep. So that's the that's the go for me. You don't want a big pool of oil on the bottom yeah. of the salad. There we go, Vanessa. It is ready. Wow. Yeah, that a, looks incredible. For me, that's a massive wow kitchen moment every Christmas. How do you know it's actually cooked through? So, I mean, by cooking it for two hours, you know it's going to get heat through, but also just yeah. If you put a, a knife through to the bone mm -hmm. and it comes out, it's nice and warm, yeah. we're good to go because the ham's already cooked. There's nothing else to do, nothing else to say. We just put it straight onto our board. Mm -hmm. We go to the table and we serve everyone. Fantastic. All right. Well, Vanessa, this table looks incredible. What have you done? So this look is quite simple, yet really elegant as well. The way in which we've achieved this look is we've kept the palette quite monochromatic. Um, and then to achieve that level of sophistication that we were after, we've added in really beautiful elements of gold. Oh, fantastic. Yeah, thank you. Well, I reckon it's about time we do some eating. I think so too. Let's dig in. Perfect time to eat. Merry yeah. Christmas. Merry Christmas.